Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Thursday afternoon. Hope you're well, hope you're looking after yourself and having a good day and all that jazz. Got a different style video. As much as, you know, we talk about previews and reviews for games, we talk about, you know, transfers, we talk about, you know, new ownership even at times or legal issues. This was a little bit different, but this is a tiered sort of list, okay? And we're going to be talking around players that, uh, that we, you know, are, well, this is me obviously, but to keep... You know, I'm undecided on loan or sell, whatever. You'll see what I mean. I'll, I'll justify what I mean as well. And obviously, you can sort of play along as well, kind of in your own head saying, I'd move him from here, here to here. And I'm happy to have a little chat about it as well. Just to say, if you're new, subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And let's jump in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the players that I want to keep. Now, with this list, you've got players that are currently on loan as well as players that are in the first team squad, all right? So just... Play along, all right? So in my first list, I've got keep, and, and I've got two keepers, Vicario and Fraser Forster. I've got Destia Dogi, Porro, Romero, Van der Ven, Radu Draguzin, uh, Basuma, Bentacor, Saar, Madders, Kulu, Son, Solomon, Werner, and Richarlison. Now, <clears throat> I think a lot of that you can kind of go, yeah, that's obvious, you know, Vicario, Adogi, Porro, uh, the three centre-backs, Basuma, Saar, you know, Bentancourt, Madders, uh, Kulu Son, uh, you can kind of all sit there and go, that's kind of like the first team already, so we're not shocked by that. Um, on Frazier Forster, let me start there. So I'll start with in the list, if you saw it, you know, Frazier was, I think, second in the list. So with Frazier, the reason why I put Frazier there is uh, it's really homegrown. It gives you so much ability to actually bring in a foreign player to play in the squad, so you're not hamstrung by it. Now, what I would say, play with me here, what I would say is I would like to bring in another two, a, a number two keeper and Frazier become your number three. That's how Manchester City have done it with Scott Carson. They did it with Richard Wright. Um, it's how a lot of teams actually do it, really. You know, Rob Green at Chelsea. You have a third keeper who is part of your first team squad, but he's English. It allows you to do more elsewhere, right? Uh, moving on, you know, like I said, the defenders aren't shocking, obviously. Um, you know, into the midfield... I don't think any of that's shocking either to you, you know. I think, you know, a lot of those guys have played a lot of football this year. I think you probably find the attackers is where some of you might go. That's a bit different. Um, Solomon, look, he's got he's got himself a massive long contract. A lot of people seem to not like Solomon. I haven't seen enough of him. That's why I've said keep. He's also on a long-term deal, so it's not like Spurs are going to happily move him on for no reason. Let's see what he's got. I think that's only fair. I think if you think we've seen enough of Solomon... You probably don't watch a ton of football, is what I'll say about that. Now, if you go, look, I'm just not keen on him. I don't think he suits the style of play. That's fine. But sitting there going, I don't want him. I've not liked what I've seen. I don't think you've given him a fair chance. You know, he's had a, he's been out injured a long time as well. Uh, for Werner, I've liked what I've seen with Werner. Um, 15 million when you look at the summer for his buy option as well. You know, he plays off the left, can play through the striker. I actually think his link-up play is quite good from the left. And his runs are so well-timed. Sometimes all we need to do is do this. Just keep lifting your head. Seems like Madison's the only one that wants to find him. Everyone else goes, I'm going to pass it inside and we'll go here instead. Whereas Vern is like, I'm through. I'm literally through every single time. Um, I've liked what I've seen. And Richarlison, look, I'm, I'm basing this off of this season. I'm not basing off of last season. When he's been fit and post-surgery, he's been fantastic. And that's why I've said keep him. Also, you'll find that we're not going to move on 15 players this summer. So you need to also be realistic in that regard. Because when I look at my sell list, <clears throat> there is, uh, there's seven on there. But you could, in theory, add more to that list. And that's what I'll talk about in a second when I look at my undecideds. But, you know, we do still need strikers. You're not going to bring in two or three strikers this summer. That's why I've said it as well. So, yeah, that's my keep list. When I look into my undecided, I've got Giamano Celso, Emerson Royale, Ben Davies, Oliver Skip, uh, Alfie Devine, Troy Parrott, Cessignon, Donnelly and Dorrington. Now, let me first premise this one, OK? With Devine, with Parrott, Donnelly and Dorrington, that's more about do I want them to go out on loan, OK? Um, Parrott maybe not, not as much, but at least with Devine... Dorrington and Donnelly, just do I want to go out on loan? Maybe maybe Devine goes to a top championship team, maybe he goes into a Premier League team and you know, does Donnelly and Dorrington get a bit more time in the championship? You know, if because if they're not going to get regular minutes or good solid minutes here and there, I'd rather them go and play 90 minutes a week in the championship because I think it's it, it, it will make them 
And if it doesn't make them, it'll break them. And then we know we, they were never truly going to hit the heights that we all thought they would hit. So that's what I mean by them. When I look at um, La Celso, for example, I think this is the make or break next few months leading into the summer. Does he knuckle down? Does he stay fit? That's a big one. Does he play well when he's fit? Does he allow Madison to have, you know, a game off if he truly needs it? You know, and that's what the whole thing with La Celso is about. When he's played, money. But he's not played enough. And Madison's missed a lot of football and he's not played enough in the time that Madison's missed because of injuries. So that's what I'm saying. Let's, let's give him the next few months. If it's not if it's not gone the way we wanted to go, you'd move him into the sell option. Okay. Uh, for Emerson Royale, look, good, friendly hand in the squad. I think is what you say. You know, versatile with the fact he plays the fullback positions. You can play a bit of centre half if you truly need it. Although we don't really want to do that. He's obviously a very good character. People really do like him at the squad. And and for me, if you're not going to get a good enough offer, keep him. But if someone goes, here's 25, 30 million, I'm selling him. Because at the end of the day, as much as I'm like, hey, I like the vibes, hey, I like the positive characters, you can get a positive character who's also going to really push Poro at that right back position. And that's what we want. Emerson's not pushing Poro for that right back position. He really isn't. And we want someone to really push Poro that you actually get Poro to go up another level as well as the guy that's chasing him also do the same thing. So if you're not going to get a good enough deal, I think keep him. But if you, if someone offered you 25, 30 million, you've got to seriously think about moving him on because that's good money. Also, that actually probably benefit you in the financial fair play situation as well. So you've got to you know, take that into account. Uh, ben Davies, similar sort of thing. You know, very capable. You know, plays a bit of centre-back, plays a bit of left-back. And, well, good Lord, you know, losing Perisic for the season. Session's not been fit. You know, Davies has been at least there to play left back if we need him, although I don't think he's got the pace enough to play left back, nor do I think his right foot's good enough in our inverted fullback situation, right? Didn't think of that one, did you? Now, with Davies, obviously, you know, good leadership as well. You know, he's been quite a key figure this season because of all the injuries. But what I wouldn't th one thing I would say is, again, he's getting on there in age. We don't want to become a place where people can play up to 33, 34, 35 years old. Like, you know, Hugo did to a degree. We want to move him on a little bit before that, before it gets to that point. But you also want to get a good enough deal. Because if someone's going to come in and go, here's two and a half million for Ben Davies, then obviously we're not going to do it. But if a newly promoted side came up and get and went, here's 15 million for Ben Davies, you do have to sit there and kind of go, that's the best offer we're going to get for him ever. That's We're not going to get that again. Do we take it? Do we feel like we can replace him? And I think you probably could replace him. And I think that's where Lloyd Kelly comes in. You see what I mean? One out, one in. One's actually cheaper than the other. Um, with Oliver Skip, something a little bit similar. You know, safe pair of hands. You know, he doesn't seem to miss a ton of football this season, which is good. He's, he's been needed for that, ironically. Homegrown, another thing. But if you were to get a good offer, financial fair play would love you for it because obviously he's an academy option. But if we had... You know, let's say La Celso rock and rolled the next six months and was, everyone was like, yeah, keep him, give him an extension, right? Let's just, just for sake of this argument, it's a bit easier. You've got those two. You've got Basuma and Bentacore, let's say, as your sixes. And then your eight, you've got Saar and then a guy you bring in. Behind that, I have no issues with Skip saying. Because you think, you're not going to have everyone always fit. You can't have eight midfielders that are absolutely top, top class. You want to have a, a Skip that doesn't have to play every single game. You can, you know... Let's say you're three and up, you should go, let's throw him on for 20 minutes. We don't really need to be doing much else. Let's throw him on for 20 minutes, you know, save so-and-so's legs or whatever like that. I'm, I'm all for that. That's why. But if you get a good deal, and I wouldn't be doing a loan deal, it would be a sell in my opinion, you know. Obviously, I've talked about Alfie. I've talked about uh, Dorrington and Donnelly. With Sess, let's just see what he's got for the next few months. Can he stay fit, I think, is the big one with us. He's defensively quite sound, to be honest. You know, I, I don't have any issues with Sessi on defending in space. I, I actually think he's quite a good defender for a guy who was a left winger by by trade from Fulham. But he's got to stay fit. He's got to stay fit regularly as well. Not just a couple of weeks here. Oh, he's got a bit of a niggle. A couple of weeks here, a bit of a niggle. He's got to stay fit now to the end of the season. And if he does play, because you know, at the end of the day, Destiny Adogi is a young guy. He can handle a lot of the workload right now. But why I want someone to push Destiny Adogi like a do Pedro Porro. And if Sess can't push him, then we need to be looking to bring someone else in that can push Destiny. Because Destiny's great, and he's absolutely on his way to being, you know, a, trop, a top, top, world-class left-back. 
But imagine if someone was behind him that was really good. Imagine what Destiny Adogi's level would really be then. That's why we want competition places. Um, yeah, and with Troy Pratt, let me finish on this one because in this area of undecided, see what, you know, he's had decent loan spot at Excelsior Rotterdam. If Ange looks at him and goes, he's got something to offer me, keep him. If he doesn't, I'd probably sell him, to be honest. Because I think there's only so many loan deals you can do before it starts sort of wearing off that it's a loan deal kind of guy and you're never really going to get anything out of him. Move him on, let him really get his career going. That's And that's, that's also for Troy, because if you're not going to use him, let him go and let him go and really knuckle down on his career because that means he can play somewhere for two or three years and really knuckle down and feel like that's him he can develop. Uh, for loan, I had Valise and Phillips. Um, for Phillips, purely if a solid Premier League team would like, can we take him on loan for a season? I'd be taking that because I think that development you've seen at Plymouth, who are a mid table sort of championship side, mid table to bottom half, somewhere in there, you know, you'll find that. It, he's developed him a lot. And then if you can kind of go, yeah, but now he's in a Prem team, he's going to develop even more playing week in, week out. Now, if he's not going to get that, and at Spurs, you can say, no, he's going to get some good minutes, then fine, keep him. But again, it's development. Same with Alejo Valise, you know, again, if he was coming next year, he's like, he's the number two striker. That's it. At Sevilla, he's killed it. We're really happy with him. He's going to have a whole summer now to train with the guys. He'll be ready to go for the season. Fine. But if someone in the Prem kind of goes, wouldn't mind having him on loan for the season. You know, no options to buy on both those players. Just straight loan for a season. I'm all for that. I think that would be good business. You bring in a striker that you truly want, you know. Richardson maybe only plays a one more year and then he goes, you know. That's the forward thinking. And then for Sell, in this area, I have Hoiberg, Brian Hill, Tanganga, Spence, Regulon, and Dombele, and Roden. Now, look... Let me start with the guys out on loan. Uh, Roden, this is probably the most amount of money you're going to get from him in the summer. You probably could get up to about 20 million for him because he's having such a good season in the Championship. Cash in, use that money to reinvest into the first-team squad. Also, your financial fair play loves you because you signed him for 15 million. He's been here for a few years. He'd have paid off a lot of that deal anyway. If you send him for 20, boom, that helps you there. We look at Tangi and Dombele. I think the writing's on the wall. He'll have one year left on his contract in the summer. If you can just move him on and someone just take on his deal, I think you just let him go for free and let someone take his deal. That's how I would do it personally. Uh, Regulon, look, well, let's see how Brentford goes. But after that performance against City, who I, th I thought he played very well, that's someone that you can get some money out of. And he's got one year left on his contract, I believe. That will be the summer that you have to cash in on him. And that's where I'd be doing it personally. If he if he kills it at Brentford, and Brentford go, can we have him? And Regulon still fancies being at Brentford. I think you can get 10 million out of him for sure. For sure. He's a good, solid left back. Um, for Jed Spence, Genoa supposedly always wanted him before he actually came. Now they've got him. 10 million euros, I think, is the buy option. I think they could pick that up. It's about eight and a half million pounds. I think they pick that up. You take that money. You wash your hands, you move him on, and you let him focus on his career and knuckle down to become the player that we all thought he could become. Uh, for Tanganga, let's see how Millwall goes. But to be honest, if he does well enough, 10 million I could see being on that door. He's homegrown, helps us with financial fair play. So yeah, with Brian Hill, look, Brian, I've seen flashes, but I've only seen flashes. And that's my issue there. I don't think he's physical enough for our league, let alone our club. I don't see it be. I don't see him being a top prem player because if you look at some of the wingers that are tricky and nimble and you know slight, they still got a little bit about them. They don't get knocked around. They don't get pushed off the ball. You look at Bernardo Silva, who's not a big guy. He doesn't get pushed off the ball. Whereas Brian Hill, someone sneezes at him and he does. He does take a tumble. And then for Pierre Hoiberg, look, he's going to have one year left on his deal. He already kind of wants to leave anyway. I think this is a no-brainer deal. 15 to 20 million, somewhere in there you can get from him. I think you take that money. I really do. But yeah, guys, that was just a bit of a different video. I know it's, I know it's not always you know the sexiest thing to talk about your squad because everyone wants to go, who are we buying? Who are we buying? Who are we buying? Sometimes it's nice to kind of say from there, who's, who, who do you think we should keep? Who are you undecided about? Who we should loan? Who we should sell? And that's where I've kind of gone with it. And I know it might be a bit controversial with some of my opinions, but that's why I want to know what your thoughts are about my controversial opinions. But anyway, guys, it's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Drop a like on it if you did. 
Hit me in the comment section like your thoughts and feelings about it all. Just tell me everything. I want to know it all. Subscribe if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. Better guys than the video. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.